All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, thank you to all of you who are joining us today. I'm Caitlin Barnard, Developer and Community Marketing Manager here at Kong. I'm also joined by Kevin Chen, our Developer Advocate. So I'm super excited to welcome you to December's online meetup. Today we have Greg on, the, the creator of Insomnia. So Insomnia joined Kong back in October, and he's going to talk a little bit about what the project is and take you through some live demos of it in action. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, with that, I'll hand it over to Greg to get started. Awesome, thanks Caitlin. Um, so yeah, I, like Caitlin said, am the creator of Insomnia, and I'm gonna go over a little bit of the story of how it started and sort of the purpose of it to set some context for what I'll be showing later. And then I'll end with a demo, um, which will take up most of the time, which will go through um, what the app is, what it does, and some real world use cases of using it. Um, so this is a curl command, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Curl is an extremely popular command line tool for sending essentially HTTP requests. Um, so you can use it to debug and send things back and forth. And so back in 2014, I was working at a company as a developer and we were building an API to send transactional emails. So we were sending, we would send a lot of these curl commands all the time to debug our APIs and like test and debug new features. But we would also use it to send snippets to our customers to help them get onboarded with the API and also debug their problems as well. But as you can see, curl is fairly complicated and it can get even more complicated. There's lots of parameters to remember. It's really easy to make mistakes and it's really difficult to keep these organized if you need to come back to um, the requests you sent before or for example, if you wanna modify one to send to a customer. So I essentially decided to replace this workflow and build an app to allow users to do this more uh, easily and more intuitively. So that app is Insomnia and I released it in 2014. And back then it was just a simple um, web application to send and receive JSON for an API. And that's essentially all we needed at that job. So that worked really for well for us. The app was simple, easy to use. And um, I launched it in the Chrome Web Store initially so that both us and our customers could use it. Um, so now we could go from using curl to using insomnia and we could really easily um, get up and running with an API and so could our customers. So people really loved it. They loved that simplicity that it had at the start, which it still continues to have today. And essentially it started getting shared around with lots of word of mouth. And so I kept working on it and I, about a year after launching, I was able to quit my job to focus on it full time. But eventually about, I would say a year after I quit my job, I got stuck. Um, as you all know, APIs are complicated. There's a lot of different technologies involved, especially around authentication, um, different protocols, uh, DNS, uh, lots of little things like that. So essentially I was just one person and I couldn't keep up. I couldn't keep up with the wide variety of feature requests that were coming in. And it was just impossible for me to learn everything that I needed to make a really robust API client. So I took it a step further and decided to open source it in 2017. Um, basically the idea was to allow the community to fill in some of those gaps where maybe my knowledge wasn't um, where it should have been. Um, so people could like jump in and like add an OAuth, OAuth authentication support, for example, which was actually one of the first community contributions for Insomnia. So I didn't have to spend time um, digging through the OAuth spec to sort of learn what it was and implement it. Um, the community was able to do that for the application. So that's worked out really well. Um, almost immediately after open sourcing it, there like people started having lengthy, dis lengthy discussions on GitHub, um, submitting uh, features, like I, like I mentioned before, and just in general, like making the app more robust. So fast forward to today, and Insomnia is used by over 500,000 developers every single month. It has over 100, 120 um, contributors on GitHub now, 
and it just passed 11,000 stars. So what actually is insomnia? What is it today? Well, it's very similar to what it was when I first created it. Um, it essentially, its main goal is to make APIs easier to interact with for like regular people like you and me. Um, and it does that in a number of ways. For example, it, um, it understands popular API spec formats like OpenAPI, uh, Swagger, Curl, and a couple other ones. Um, it can generate code snippets so that you can copy and paste requests um, from Insomnia into your programming language of choice, whether that's Python, Go, JavaScript, whatever you use. Um, and it has a plugin system. So even if Insomnia doesn't support your use case fully, you can usually um, develop a custom plugin to, again, fill in those gaps where maybe there isn't that 100% support for what you're doing. So that's basically a quick overview of what Insomnia is. Um, now I want to get into actually showing it. Um, it's a lot easier to demonstrate by showing rather than explaining. So I'm just going to jump in with a demo, and I'll start by going over um, just exploring the app a little bit, um, describing um, what, what makes up the app, um, then go over a couple examples like importing a spec, using OAuth, uh, playing a little bit with GraphQL, and also some more advanced things like environment variables. Oops. All right, so I'll exit out of here. Okay, so first thing, um, you can download Insomnia at insomnia.rest, which is the domain name. And it's cross-platform, it's a desktop application. So if you head over to the download page, you can download it for Mac, Windows, um, even Linux if you want. Um, I'm on Mac, so um, I've already installed it. And now I can just go ahead and open it up. I'm just gonna create a new workspace so we can get started. Okay, so this is essentially what you see when you open up Insomnia for the first time. You have a sidebar on the left, which holds all of your requests that you'll be creating. Um, so let's go ahead and create one now. And I'm going to do a request just to fetch the fetch a JSON blob so I can show you what that's like. And so now you can see the request pane shows up. So I'm going to type in the URL um, and I'm going to fetch the insomnia change log, which is a JSON blob. So you can see I went ahead and sent the request and now the response shows up um, on the right here. So you can see it previews the, the response in a nice friendly way. It formats it for you and um, highlights the syntax. You can see all the headers that came back, as well as the, the cookies. And then you can even um, see the full timeline of the request that uh, just happened. So Insomnia uses libcurl under the hood. So you get the same uh, very verbose debug output that you would use in curl from the command line, which is really awesome and really useful. Um, so that's, that's setting up a basic request. Um, but it goes further than that. So you can set up um, authentication on your request, um, which there are many available that you can go through. So say you want basic auth. So I just type in your username and password. And if I send that, um, you can see it will have added the basic auth header for you. Um, and that works similarly for every authentication mechanism that you have here. Um, you can enter uh, query parameters. So Maybe you need to do some pagination. Um, you can do that. You can add custom headers, and you can even add a markdown documentation for each request, um, which is useful if you're sharing, say, an Insomnia workspace with your team. Um, you can go ahead and add a description and fill out some fill out, fill out a, a verbose description so that your team can then import it and quickly understand what the request is doing. So that's essentially insomnia in a nutshell. And that was like in the beginning, that's all insomnia did. You would be able to set up requests, send them, as well as organize them in a nice way in the sidebar. Um, but that's not all it does, like I said. 
And I want to go over some more complicated examples to show you just how powerful and helpful insomnia can be. And I want to start off with um, using an actual API. So I want to go ahead and create a new workspace. And the API I'm choosing to use today will be the GitHub API because we'll be able to de demonstrate um, using the API, um, authenticating with OAuth 2, as well as uh, using their GraphQL version of the API, which they also have. So let's go ahead and create another request. Um, I'm just gonna do GitHub base. So I, I created a new request, and now if we go over to the documentation, so here's the GitHub API documentation. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste the base URL here. I'm just into insomnia, hit send. And you can see we're using the GitHub API. Um, so what else, what does the API do? You can see there's a bunch of endpoints here. Um, we'll just use this one for now to fetch the, the current user. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another request for fetching the user. I'm gonna paste that URL in there. So if I send that, now you'll see um, it doesn't work because it needs authentication in order to um, actually make the API call. And GitHub uses OAuth 2 for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select OAuth 2 from the auth menu. And um, one cool thing that Insomnia does is it has auto, an autocomplete system. So it knows that I'm setting up OAuth 2 and it knows that it's the authorization URL. So it's actually able to suggest some options um, from common and popular APIs. So if I were to just go from the root, um, you can see a bunch that are listed here that are um, supported by default, just to help you uh, get one step further and set things up more quickly. So I'll go ahead and fill out the GitHub um, authorization and access token URL. And then I'm gonna go over to my little credentials file here and just paste those in. All right, so I filled out all my OAuth 2, two uh, options here and I can hit send on that. And it didn't show you um, because I was already logged in, but the first time that you go to fetch a token, it'll pop up one of those OAuth dialogues so you can log in with your GitHub username and password, and then it'll automatically fetch those tokens for you, like you can see here, and send those with the request. So you can see if we go over to the timeline again, um, you can see the bearer token is being sent and it's authenticated correctly. So we have this response, you can see it gets my user with a bunch of information. And yeah, that's it, that's OAuth 2. Um, if you haven't used OAuth 2, um, setting up Setting it up yourself is extremely complicated. So having Insomnia do it for you just makes it again, one step easier um, to like get up and running to use an API really quickly. All right, so let's try something else. Um, well, first of all, before I make another request, you can see we have some repetition here. So I have this um, base URL in two places. So the next thing that we could do um, to make us make ourselves more efficient is we can set up an environment. So an environment in Insomnia is essentially a container of common values that you can reuse with it throughout the application. So if I go over to manage, I can go ahead and create an environment. I'm just gonna call it GitHub API. And I'll go ahead and paste that um, base URL in there. Uh, paste that base URL in there, and now I can go ahead and um, reference the base URL. Oh, first I need to activate the environment. All right, now I have the base URL there. Um, I'll also put it in the other request. And if I send that, you'll see that um, I go back to the timeline. You can see the URL was populated from the environment variable. 
And the cool thing about this is say you're working on a, like developing an API, you can actually create multiple of these sub environments. So maybe if you work at GitHub, you might be um, working on like the staging, staging GitHub API. And I don't, I don't know what their URL would be, but maybe it's staging github.com. So then when you have multiple environments, you can switch between them. And if I go over to the query tab here, which will preview the URL, you can see when I switch between the APIs or the environments, the API um, updates accordingly because you have this variable in here. So variables are an extremely powerful way to um, reuse common values and basically create sets of values for different environments. So you can easily switch between them and essentially be more productive. All right, so we have, we're fetching the, the base API for GitHub. We've fetched the user. Now let's go ahead and fetch all of my repositories for um, my GitHub user. So we'll go ahead and duplicate this call. I'll call it fetch repositories. And if we go back over here, Let's see, repositories. Hmm, maybe we'll go back to the docs. Okay, I think I think I remembered. Oh, um, I think it's slash user repositories. Not found. Uh, repositories uh -huh. okay github oh it's just repos okay you can see here slash repos all right so that is a lot of information this is every repository in my github account both public and private um, but this is not very useful, as you can see. There's a lot of information here. Um, what if I just want to find a specific value inside of here? Like, what if I want to just get all the names of all my public repositories, for example? Well, one cool thing you can do in Insomnia is you can actually use JSON path filters, um, which you can see there's a little help dialog here. Uh, JSON path is essentially like a query language for JSON objects. So you can uh, filter them down and um, dig into them in order to get the information that you want from them. So we're going to be doing something like this in order to um, say first we'll get all the names of the repositories in my account. So if we go to the top, you can see it's an array of objects. And I will do so the way JSON path works is you start off with a dollar sign and it's sort of like JavaScript dot notation. Um, but more advanced. So if I want to do get all the repositories name, for example, so that will filter out every object and just get the name of that object. Um, but what if we want to get all of the public repositories? So we can actually go look at this. Okay, it looks like there's a private attribute, which is a Boolean. Um, and the way you can filter that would be, again, um, so you can see I have the private attribute, but I actually want to filter on that. So what I can do is I can create this uh, filter, which looks something like this in JSON path. And I can do dot private equals uh, false. So this just gets all the um, non-private repositories. And then at the end, I can just tack the name on top. And you can see there is a list of all my public repositories under my account. So pretty cool feature there. Um, there's actually JSON path um, in other parts of the application as well. So um, if you are able to learn it, then you will be able to use it in even more advanced ways um, throughout the application. All right, so I've essentially showed you so far um, creating a few requests, um, setting up an environment in Insomnia, um, using environment variables, um, setting up an OAuth authentication flow so that you can authorize with an API, 
and then also sending requests and filtering them down in order to get the information that you want. Um, one of the other really common use cases for Insomnia is GraphQL. So GraphQL is a query language uh, for APIs, which is meant to, I guess, give a more robust interface to APIs. So one, it's structured, it has a strict schema, so that tools like Insomnia are able to fetch the schema and uh, basically provide assistive tooling on top of an API. Uh, so let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Now, I chose GitHub because GitHub has a traditional RESTful API, which we've just been using, but they also actually have a GraphQL version of that. So I thought it'd be a good idea to demonstrate what we've already done, but in GraphQL. Um, so if we go over here, we can see the root endpoint is, looks like the same API that we were just using, but slash GraphQL. I'm gonna go over here and create a new folder called GraphQL. And I'm gonna duplicate this request just so I can keep the authentication info in there. And we'll call it, uh, okay, fetch user. And we'll update the URL to point to the GraphQL endpoint that um, we need. So the only step left to do is change the uh, request body type to GraphQL. You can see as soon as we do that, oh, I got a typo here, GraphQL. You can see as soon as we do that, um, Insomni actually tries to fetch the schema for the API. Um, it knows that it's GraphQL and it knows that um, all GraphQL APIs expose a schema for all the data types and all the queries you can run. So as soon as we did that, it just fetched the entire schema and stored it in memory. And one of the cool things that we can do now is instead of having to go through the GraphQL documentation on the, the website to see what it does, um, because Insomnia has the schema, we can actually view the same information directly from the app without leaving it. So if we go over here, we can see the documentation. Um, I'll click on the queries and let's see if we can find the user query that we executed in the other API. Uh -huh. Okay, so here it's just called user and it returns a user type and we can click through on that. Um, and the user type, it looks like there's a bunch of sub queries inside of it. Um, let's see if we can find the repositories query that we were using. Okay, so looks like we can make a user query similar to we did before and also query the repositories as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and one thing that you'll notice right away if I start typing a query, um, you'll get the same autocomplete that we saw for environment variables, but this time it's showing um, attributes of GraphQL and various queries and things that you can, you can also um, do. So we had the uh, user's query that we were looking at. We can go ahead and send that. And within the user, we maybe we'll just fetch the, the bio for the user. Uh, okay, the, the API returned an error. Looks like Insomnia also knows what the error is. Um, it says field user argument login is required and it's a type of string. Okay, so, okay, it's already auto-completing it for me, which is nice. I'm just gonna add my username in there. And now when I send it, um, it fetches all, well, it fetches the, the one attribute that I requested, the bio, and returns it from the GraphQL endpoint. So that's really cool. Basically all we needed was this GraphQL um, API URL, and we were able to browse the documentation, figure out what queries existed, and also take advantage of Insomnia's autocomplete to very easily um, like execute, like enter the query and um, ensure that it was correct. So that saves a ton of time if you're using GraphQL. Um, it just makes the whole process extremely easy. So if we wanna do the same thing we did before with the RESTful API, um, we're gonna need to fetch the repositories. So again, making use of the autocomplete, we can grab the repositories and it looks like it's returning a sub list of nodes. Um, and there's, yeah, there's a name attribute. 
So let's fetch all the repositories names. Uh, missing pagination boundary in repositories. Okay, it looks like the linter didn't catch this one um, for some reason, probably because the parameters are um, optional in a way. Um, so let's just fetch the first, I don't know, 999. Uh, oh, excessive pagination. Okay, lower that a little bit. All right, so that should fetch all of the repositories. And if I also fetch the private key, we should be able to do this, a similar filter that we were doing in the other one. So let's see if I can do um, pro is private equals false. Hmm. Oh, missing a dot. All right, so, and then we'll get the name. So as you can see, same thing we did before, make use of JSON path to filter down the response and get exactly what we need. Well, let's clear that. Um, okay, so that's that's essentially all that I had to show. Um, we've covered sort of what insomnia is, um, basically covered its core, which is that it makes APIs easier to use. And the, the ways that it, we did that was we used environment variables, um, we categorized some things under folders, we used the OAuth2 um, support to make it really easy to authenticate. And then we made use of JSON path as well as GraphQL to just um, demonstrate um, how to use an API in the real world. And this is essentially how I use Insomnia. Um, it's really nice to get up and running, especially with GraphQL APIs that you haven't used yet, just because you, can, you have those documentation or you have that documentation in there. You don't need to constantly be switching between different apps and websites to get up and running. Um, okay. So we'll go back to the presentation here. And I think we have time for questions, if anyone has questions. Uh, so George had asked in the chat, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, let me open it. If not, I can, I, can, I can read it out loud for you. Yeah, sure, why don't you read it? Uh, so John asked, uh, when you specified the redirect URL for the OAuth2 as the zombie arrest OAuth, uh, did you need an Insomnia server running in the background? Uh, good question. So you don't need an Insomnia server running in the background. Um, when in here, let me see if I can demonstrate this. Uh, where to go? If I quit Insomnia, it should refresh the the cache. <clears throat> um, and if I send that request, oh, looks like. Okay, I, I can't get the OAuth dialog to pop up right now, but um, the OAuth redirect URL is essentially only required for Insomnia to be able to match against it. So when you in, open up the initial OAuth login dialog, um, Insomnia will look at the response and basically catch the redirect URL that you entered um, based on what you entered. So it'll match against it. And then it'll pull the authentication code out of there, which it will then use to fetch the token. Um, so it doesn't actually need a running server because um, Insomnia is intercepting that locally. Um, and there is one caveat, which is um, on GitHub, on the GitHub developer portal, you have to enter the same URL, the redirected URL that you do in Insomnia or else it'll return an error. So there are a couple things, but you don't actually need to have a running server in order to use it. All right, thanks, Greg, for that. Uh, anyone else have any questions? You can type it in the chat and I can read it out loud for the group. All right, looks like there's, we'll give it another second or two, just in case folks are typing. All right, it looks like no one else has anything, uh, any other questions, so we can wrap up this online meetup. Uh, thanks, Greg, for a great presentation. Uh, and, you know, we, we have these calls on a monthly basis. So uh, our next call is on January 14th, and we hope to see you there. Uh, we'll have more uh, topics around uh, Common 2.0, which is coming up.
the release candidate is coming up this month. And also we're releasing Kuma 0.3.1s uh, this week. So we'll have uh, more content around that on our website. So uh, please uh, stay tuned to our blog and all the uh, social media accounts and we'll, we'll be sure to share all those new features once they come out. This recording, uh, this online meetup is also recorded so you can always uh, find it on YouTube as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. And thank you everyone for joining. Yeah, thanks everyone. Oh, Greg, one second. Uh, I believe Marcelo actually dropped a question last second. So, uh, have you considered support for OpenID Connect? Uh, I think they're, so I'm not super familiar with OpenID, but I know that they're, um, OpenID is extend, an extension of OAuth 2, I think, and there have actually been some uh, contributions related to it. Um, I think there's, I think, I, I don't know, I think there's a couple things that are OpenID specific, um, because people have been using it with Insomnia. I'm not sure how broad the support is, but there are a few things. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. That's good Thanks.